We're thrifting today. It's a thrifting day. Hey there. I'll just get a medium cappuccino, please. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Have a good one. We've got a fair bit to get done today. Um, I've got to go and do some thrifting. Uh, so we're going to go and do that now, try and find some items. Uh, list them up this afternoon as well. I need to do the post. I think we've got 10 sales uh, to put into some mailbags and get out the door. So that's got to be done by five o'clock. And uh, I want to let you guys in on a couple of bad buys that I've done recently. Just been a little bit too eager um, on a couple of purchases that haven't resulted in the best returns or won't result in the best returns. So I want to give you a bit of a breakdown on how I go about my bulk deals uh, when I do it the right way, I guess. So big episode, let's get into the thrift. First item I saw were these ASICS Gel Cumulus. Really good pair of running shoes, but it was just a little bit of wear on the sole for $15 meant that I put those back. These were the uh, the Nike Train Commands. For $10, a little bit less in price, similar condition. I just went ahead with the purchase. Nike's always a good brand. And these Mizuno Waveknit R2s go for about 50 bucks. So should be about $100 in revenue. All right, so not too bad of a start at Salvation Army. Two pairs of shoes, which isn't too bad. Let's jump into this Lifeline next. See if we can find anything in there. Here's a little nugget of knowledge for you guys. Make sure you don't sleep on your hats. This uh, Harlem Globetrotters hat, really cool find. Three bucks, should convert into about 30. Gladiators, a retro TV show hat here. You don't often see this. I'm gonna push for about 50 bucks on this one, just because it is a little bit unique. Only $3 there. There are actually two of them as well. Let me know if you watch that TV show. And I also found a Katmandu hat here as well. Just a really good hiking brand. You guys know Katmandu. Uh, that should turn into about $30 to $35. So the hats, there's some big money in them and I haven't paid a lot to get my hands on them. This New Zealand Warriors top, um, look, I am picking up my sporting merchandise. $12 was a little bit steep for this one here. So I just put it up onto Instagram. I actually sold it on Instagram to a viewer that uh, obviously was a New Zealand Warriors fan. So didn't make any profit, but happy to facilitate the purchase. Now for $20, this Liverpool jersey, I get a lot of questions from you guys about authenticity. What you're seeing here, I deem to be authentic. Had all the right sponsorship markings, good embroidery there, the Adidas, the Climacool that you're seeing here. Um, and also too, the, the other thing that's really important with these is the inside tag. And as you can see here, this is a genuine tag, a 2010 jersey. Did some comp research and they go for about 60 bucks, but I just thought for $20, I might leave that one behind. As a comparison, this Lakers jersey, I deem to be a fake. And there's a few reasons why. Usually you see some stitching on the number. That can easily be printed on. That can just be stitched on that bottom logo. So it was also no inner tag there. So there were a couple of different things there that made me think maybe not. Um, but yeah, hopefully that can help you guys out there. Moved into the cash converters and I found a bunch of video games that were really cheap. All of these games sell between $20 to $25 on eBay and I'm picking them up for either $2 or $5. So cash converters can be a really good option for you. Video games are obviously a huge category that I play in. Um, I also found in the cabinet this here as well. This was for $79. It was a damaged corner. And uh, that meant that price was obviously a whole lot less than what it's actually for. It's usually about 150 to 160, but given the damage that you'll see here, right there on the corner, I wasn't sure if this was able to be played or not. So it was gonna be a huge risk to go ahead with a $70 purchase. Majora's Mask, Nintendo 64. It's just such a highly sought after game, guys. I couldn't, I couldn't say no to it. I ended up getting it for 70 bucks. So I saved a little bit of money, but it, it sells for $150 if it's in good condition. The issue is it's obviously got that crack in it and I don't know if it plays or not. So it's definitely a risky purchase, but I'm happy to take the risk because if it does play, I think I can sell it for about 125. And 125 would net me around about $30, I think, after fees and posts. But I know the sell-through rate for something like that is going to be about you know three or four days. It won't take very long at all. So while I don't have a Nintendo 64 console at home to test this one out, I do know a guy not too far away that does. And I'm going to rip around there now and just give this one a test and see if it works. 
All right, the moment of truth. Let's see if this thing works. Come on. Oh. Yeah. Looking good. All right. Thanks, Reese. I'll see you soon, mate. Too. I've got to say guys, I'm absolutely wrapped to see that working. I was a little bit nervous there, but look, for 70 bucks, that should be able to convert into 125, as I mentioned. 30 bucks worth of profit and a pretty quick sell through rate. I probably wouldn't recommend you guys going out and doing that, like for $80. I just did it more so for the interest of the video, uh, which is a large part of what I do on this channel is just try and find into interesting scenarios. Um, and, and little challenges, um, but warranty 100% could have taken that one back. But yeah, there'll be a few bucks in it, which is really cool. Um, I've got my 10 items that I bought today and I like to go out to the thrift. I like to buy my items. I like to list them up. I like to have no death piles. And I talk about that quite a bit on this channel. And it was very interesting to see a video yesterday from Brad, Diver Flipper Judder, a really good mate of mine. This isn't um, a retaliation. This isn't um, me disagreeing with anything that Brad says. We are very good mates and we speak regularly. But Brad had a video yesterday that spoke around uh, his thoughts on death piles, and this is what he said. He comes back to the old, don't have a death pile. You're going to get everything listed straight away. Eh. Well, I buy in bulk, so I buy lots and lots and lots of shit all the time, and I'm not going to not buy a good deal because I've still got shit to list. You know, it's going to get up there eventually. If you have a good system, I'll get it up in time. You know, it's, it's, it's just works so much easier. Rather than, oh, I went to an op shop today, got 20 things, get all that up before I can go out again. That mentality as a full-timer is friggin' stupid. And um, for me personally, anyway, you know, it just makes zero sense because, what, you know, things pop up all the time. And if I've got a bunch of jeans to list, I'm going to list them all at once. So you are in a routine, you're in a rhythm, you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. Um, that's just how I like to work. And I just hate it when... I see people on social media go, don't have a death pile. Don't tell me what to do, motherfucker. It's the same for the other way around, though. I'm not going to sit here and tell you do have a death pile because if you're not going to list it, it's ridiculous, you know? Same deal. So if someone on the internet tells you to do something, don't do it. Do what works for you. Uh, that's where <laughs> what I'm all about. But uh, it, it trips me out when people that have no knowledge of somebody else's business sit there and tell them don't have a death pile get that shit listed anyway i'll stop rambling about that shit now I, I couldn't help but want to just respond to that with my own video today because i have kind of been that guy on the internet that brad's referring to that said the no death pile mentality i've always been against it i've never thought that you should go out and uh basically just hoard stock you should come in buy your items list your items sell your items that's a very healthy thing to be doing and i say that because I know that 99% of you guys that are watching are either part-time casual or you maybe haven't even yet started an eBay business. Let me know in the comments below if you are less than 12 months in the game, part-time casual or haven't yet started. Because I know through community posts that I've posted on my channel to try and understand you guys as the audience, you're at that very much beginner level stage. And Brad speaks very heavily and very educated around the fact that he's a full-timer and that's what he needs to do as a full-timer, I'm trying to help those that I perceive to be watching me. And I believe that that is the beginner level. So if you are a beginner and you have a full-time job and you're trying to make a few hundred bucks, don't have a death pile. Go out, buy your 20 items a week and actually list up your 20 items a week and then go out again and buy more. But I just really want to reiterate that point in this video today to kind of at least give some justification as to why I say you shouldn't have a death pile. You shouldn't have a death pile if you're a beginner and I believe most of you out there probably are. Right, we have a bit of post to do guys. I really wanna show you these 10 sales that have sold over the last 24 hours. I try and do the post now every 24 hours just to make life a bit easier for me so I'm not doing big large allotments of posts at any one time. 10 a day is pretty manageable and that's sort of what I'm getting in sales. So let's go and have a quick look at what I've been able to look out that is gonna to go today. So this worked out to $155 worth of revenue, guys. The first one I want to have a look at is these. They sold for $39. The brand there is America. It's a really good skateboarding brand. You may have not heard about it. It's probably not the most well-known brand out there, uh, but this is a very good skateboarding brand that typically does sell well. I just don't come across too many of them. Uh, we've got a $39 sale price on those ones there. These are the Adidas Gore-Tex Kanita TR6s, US size 12, 
We got a $51 sale price. I probably would have tried to sell these individually for about $65. But considering there was a bulk purchase there, I was happy to drop the price down to 51 uh, to get the deal done. And then this one here as well, the New Balance 580s. These casual New Balance shoes, man, I'm selling so many of them. I really highly recommend you guys look out for these. Uh, a really good pair of shoes, these ones here, in excellent condition. We've got a $65 sale price for those. So $155 bucks right there and there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put them into this box. I'm going to cut the box down at each corner to get it nice and low to fill in the gap. But that's a pretty sturdy box that should be able to fit these three shoes in nice and perfect. Now, hopefully you guys have been tuning into my YouTube short series. I've been going out to retail stores to try and buy items to sell for a profit. Something a little bit different. And those YouTube shorts videos have been a lot of fun to make. This was a perfect result that came out of a budding store that I picked up a week ago. This is a XU1 Blue 18 volt drill charger. It was on the clearance rack for just 20 cents. Picked it up with some good comps on eBay and I was able to sell this one for $20. So 20 cents into $20 within a week. I think that justifies the fact that these retail arbitrage opportunities are definitely out there. Bunnings is a good place to start. Um, definitely go out there and have a look. And also for the YouTube short series, let me know where I should go next. As always, we also had some DVDs going to sell as well. This complete series of Shits Creek. This is every single episode, seasons one to six. I've got a really quick turnaround on that one there for $60. That was bought with Adam... Uh, up in Brisbane just uh, last week. So a really quick sell through rate on that one there. $60 for a complete series is pretty typical. Uh, this one as well, I bought off Adam last week too. This one sold very fast. Series one to 10 uh, of last of the summer wine. If you can find like all 32 seasons of this show, it's worth a few hundred dollars. But um, I had seasons one to 10. Comps look pretty good on eBay. Got a $65 sale price on that one there. So two really good box sets or part box sets. Uh, being able to sell out of the DVDs. A couple of individual DVDs that actually both went overseas as well, getting a lot of media going internationally, typically off to either the UK or America. So make sure you've got your international postage turned on. Um, Pack to the Rafters, this is season four, part one. We only got a $10 sale price on that one there, but I picked up an extra couple of dollars because it went with $20 worth of international postage. And on the Australia Post, my business discount, uh, I think my postage rate will be about 15. So I think I'll make an extra $5 in postage discount for myself. So not too bad there. Hey, this one's an absolute cracker. Offspring, retail arbitrage, straight out of Big W. Hopefully you've seen that video on my channel. Uh, picked up about $4,000 worth of profit in that store over about a week's period. Uh, this season seven of Offspring, brand new and sealed straight out of uh, Big W for $15 purchase, uh, has sold for $45 plus $20 off to the USA. So another international. I've sold about four of these Offsprings for 15 into 45 plus 20, and they're all going to the States. So it's something about you guys over in America that uh, really love that show, or at least just can't get your hands on it. So. Uh, that was cool to see another one come through. I've still got another four or five to sell of those. So I just kept buying them. Uh, and then this one here as well, Toy Story 3 on the PlayStation 3. We got a $12.50 sale price, I think, for this one here. Uh, no disc inside, guys. It was just a case only. So don't sleep on the cases. If it's a good game and somebody has a disc only that they might want to complete their set with, uh, these cases can go on to sell as well. So media for just a 24-hour period, pretty cool. Nothing too special out of these ones, guys. I just bought a uh, Melbourne FC uh, pencil case the other day. Well, the other day, it was about six months ago. Uh, for $2 at an op shop and uh, sold for $17, so I'm probably breaking even <laughs> on that purchase. And then this one here, a Mad Magazine special uh, of number 20. So that one sold for $17 as well. Bit of cardboard on each side, put it into a small satchel. That'll be good to go as well. So two really quick winners there, but ultimately $34 in revenue. Always a really good feeling. That'll go to the post at five o'clock. Now, I did want to talk about a bit of a blunder, a bit of a mistake that I made last Friday night on Facebook Marketplace. Granted, I haven't been using Facebook Marketplace to source many items of late, and uh, something that I used to always do was spend a bit of time prior on a potential opportunity for a buy to just comp research. And what I do is I literally just get a little notepad out, I sit at the computer, and I'll just look at all the items in, in all the photos, and I'll comp out what I think it's worth. I've done this ever since I first started. There it is there. PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, I circled up the ones that I'd sell individually, and all the other smaller priced items I was going to do is console bundles. Now, all of that was done when I had the items back here, and I'd already spent $350 on them. I was basically playing potluck. I was hoping for the best scenario. Now... 
that is the worst way to go about a bulk buy opportunity. It's always great to be the first one in and grab it, but is there actually any significant profit in it? Now, that little notebook there, when I got back home and had a look at it all, trust me, all of the items are great, they're quality, they'll all go on to sell in a quick space of time, but there was only $860 worth of estimated resale value. Now, when you take out the fees and you take out the postage, I'm probably only gonna net about a $50 profit off the initial $350 purchase price. So just a really poor lapse in judgment on my part to think that I knew what I was doing and I would just go out and grab it without doing any research just terrible and I really wish I didn't do that because all this time to list the items up now the time to wait for it to go on to sell and then the time to actually bag it up and ship it off is pretty much wasted because I'm only generating myself $50. Now, we all have these mistakes. We all like to just go out and grab the big bulk buyers. Judda says that you've got to be grabbing big bulk buyers if you want to be a full-time reseller, and that's fair. But um, I just don't think it was the right way to go about it. And I also think I neglected what is the results of these things where I comp up beforehand is to try and find the golden rule of times four. That's really what I wanted to mention to you guys today. If you're inexperienced or you're nervous about making a bulk buy because you don't know what you should actually be looking for in a return, I always think the times four model is a good one to work off. A perfect example with this $350 buy, it should have been worth $1,400 worth of value. Take out fees and postage, nets out to about $700, uh, $350 purchase price. There's a double your money scenario. I think the times four model ends up being whatever you put out is what you get back in return, $350 profit. But I didn't do it. I lost out. It was only 50 bucks in profit and it, it was just a... A real kind of realization that I needed to be doing the little things again to um, to make sure that I'm getting the good returns on the buyers that I do make because cash flow is so so important. You don't want to be tying your money up into stuff that's only going to give you your money back. Um, so yeah, hopefully the times four rule can be one that you can uh, play out if you're a little bit nervous or if you haven't made a bulk buy yet. Uh, give it a go and let me know how it goes for you. There you go. Well, that's thrifting, listing, and shipping done for yet another day, guys. And I just, just want to recap the run that you saw me do at the start of the video. That is for the hairy caterpillar above my top lip. We are doing Movember, uh, really trying to raise some money. We're trying to get to $5,000. And unfortunately, we're only seeing about 320 bucks, which don't get me wrong, super thankful for those that have put in their uh, donations. But I really want to try and ramp things up. And I guess it's just a realization that a little goes a long way. You know, five bucks, just a coffee. What would you normally put into a coffee just to put into a donation towards a really good cause? Uh, a lot of young men dying young, uh, prostate cancer, testicular cancer, um, just mental health and well-being. So it's a really good cause to get around. I'm growing the mustache. I'm running the 5Ks every single day. Day nine, really starting to feel it. The knees are really starting to hurt. But um, I reckon I can punch through the next three weeks and, and knock this one over. Uh, because it is just such a great cause and I'm enjoying doing it. So look, the link is below. Uh, like I said, just anything you can spare is a huge win. So uh, I do appreciate your support, guys. And I will leave you with this video though, right here. We speak about retail arbitrage a little earlier on in this video. This was a crazy retail arbitrage buy and uh, it was the big W one. So if you haven't seen it yet, I'll leave it there for you. I uh, appreciate you being here for this one, guys. We'll see you soon.